change your thinking. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for everything that you do in our lives. We're thankful for the families that you brought here today. And I pray that you bless them individually and collectively. That your spirit would speak to our minds with your thoughts and your understanding. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. The scripture is Proverbs, the 16th chapter, one verse. Read with me. Is it up there? The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. May God add understanding to his word. You know, the Bible says the Lord don't like pride. Pride gets in the way. Proud people never say thank you. I read a story about an elementary school boy who came home from tryouts for the school play. And he said, Mom, Mom, I got a part in the play. And she said, what is it? He said, I've been selected to clap and cheer. Now I got a question for you. When you get a chance to clap and cheer, do you take it? If you say yes, you will take it, I think that's the beginning of acquiring wisdom. Demanding respect is like chasing a butterfly. You chase it, you will never catch it. But if you sit still, the butterfly will light on your shoulder. And the Bible says, don't praise you. Don't toot your own horn. Don't blow your own whistle. Let someone else do it. Be like a light bulb. A light bulb don't say I'm a light. It just shines. Someone else says it's a light. Be like that. Proverbs, the 27th chapter, 20, verse 2. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth. Someone else, not your own lips. Proud people never say thank you. To change ourselves, to change anything, requires making choices. It's not enough to dream about changing, and it's not enough to want to change. We have to choose to change. Change is intentional. It's not haphazard. Are you going to be any different in six months from now? Are you going to be happier? Less in debt? Are you going to be joyful? I can answer that. Only if you choose to change. Only if you choose to change. Nothing is going to happen accidentally. Change requires a choice. And some of us are waiting for God to change us. That's the wrong answer. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you to say, I will make these changes. There's no growth without changing. There's no change without loss. There's no loss without pain. If you're going to grow spiritually, you have to change. Don't get stuck in the middle. Going the wrong way because you do not let go of old stuff. Old stuff. We all have old stuff. The Bible says, throw off your old sinful nature and the former ways of life. The sinful nature is something that baffles us because it's hard to understand. But we're born with it. Adam and Eve. The whole story. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, 22 to 24. You were taught with regards to your former way of life, that's the sin nature, to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Let them go. Old patterns, bad stuff. We have to let it go. 
And only each one of us know what's in our bag. I don't know what's in your bag. I only see you. The bag is what's in your heart. I had another reading. We are, we're doing pretty good today. Philippians, the second chapter, verses 12 through 13. You know, I think when you say the Bible says, you need to say it and show it. We all read it. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purposes. You know, anything, anytime Paul wrote a letter, he was writing to believers. Make sure you understand, Paul only wrote to believers. Let the spirit renew your thoughts and your attitude. Learning the truth, start making good choices and change the way you think. We know good from bad for the most part. The way you think determines the way you feel. The way you feel determines the way you act. If you want to change the way you act, change the way you think. It's a good one. The renewal of our mind is related to repentance. And I know repentance for some of us is a dirty word. We think it means something bad, something they really don't want to do, something painful. They think if a guy is standing on of a guy standing on the street corner with a sign that says, repent, the world is about to end. But I want to tell you something. Repentance has nothing to do with our behavior. It had, it's about changing our mind and learning to think differently. Repent means to make a, a mental U-turn. Stop what you're doing. Go the other way. Bad stuff. Not everything. We turn from guilt to forgiveness. We turn from frustration to freedom, from darkness to light, from hatred to, and bitterness to love. And it also means changing the way we think about God, Yahweh, I am that I am. And God is not mad at you, he's mad about you, it's a difference. And we, as people, we are deeply flawed but we are deeply loved. God loves everything about us. The hairs on our head are counted. I can't even imagine that. It's hard to get to it. Change the way you think affects emotions and behavior. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's Paul again. Romans 12 chapter, one and two. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, verse 2 gives a blueprint to change thought patterns in our lives. Do not conform. How often do we let other people shape our lives? God don't want us to be like anyone else. God wants us to be who he made us to be. Do not conform. Don't try to be like anyone else. In the Old Testament, sacrifices were made at altars. We don't have altars today. The altars we have is worship and prayer in our church family. This is how we spend time with God, offering ourselves in worship and prayer. Do not conform any longer and we develop questionable habits. Now, any longer, stop now. Chicken, 
Stop now. Change now. There are things we start by copying with other people. Then they turn to bad habits. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Replace the unhealthy patterns with new model, new patterns modeled after Jesus Christ. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transform is the same as medical metamorphosis, you know, like the hawk. But this, when that's that fantasy, this is real. Metamorphosis, the process a caterpillar goes through to become a butterfly. In the same way, God wants to transform us into a new person by the renewing of our mind. The outward change that people see first begins with an inward change that only God sees. The putting off has to happen before the putting on. It's like trying on new clothes in a department store. Before you can try on the new stuff, you got to take off the old stuff. The question everyone is asking right now is, when will things get back to normal? What if, what if the life you know does not go back to normal? What happens if it don't go back to normal? Don't trust the media to be your gospel. If you want something to trust, read the Bible. Because everything that's happening today and in the world is in the Bible. And matter of fact, you could go to Matthew 24. We didn't put it up, but read the chapter of Matthew 24 after the today is Sunday, first day of the week. It's the day that we should do it anyway. Read it. Everything happening is in the Bible. God put it that way. Alpha and Omega. That don't trust the media, put your hope in God. Why hope in God? God knows the end of the story. You want to know, you want to get an idea of what the end of the story is, go to the Bible. If you want wisdom, ask God. God holds the future. The story of Job demonstrates that. Imagine Job. You remember Job. We all saw Job. Job had no idea that God had sick the devil on him. I said sick, right? <laughs> You read Job, he was meeting, and God said, have you checked my servant Job? And he says, you got a hedge around him. You move the hedge and he'll curse you. And God said, okay, you can have anything, but you can't touch him. And what did Satan do? He destroyed everything he had, including his family. Then he met a second time. God said, have you tried Job? He says, if I could put my hands on him, I'll make him curse you. God said, very well. But you can't take his life. He did everything but take his life. He made him sick from the top to the bottom. Job didn't curse God. This country is a second Israel. <clears throat> we put God out and God has took the hedge from around this country but you, you guys know that it's already in the Bible the end times man is not going to destroy the world God will what we're seeing now is the beginning of something that it started 2,000 years ago the end times, people started looking for at that time, time. Job didn't know the future either. Neither do we. We can read the Bible and get an idea of what's going on. Job had no idea that God would restore everything that Satan took from him. Job trusted God. And that's our mission. 
to trust God. <clears throat> and I got a story, I got to tell it, it comes to my mind all the time. Be specific when you ask God for something. Exactly what you want. You've heard the story, and I'll tell it, and then I'll be done, of the preacher who prayed for the desk, a chair, and a bicycle. Nine months passed, and he had not received it, and he got upset with God. And he started whining. God don't like complaining either. <laughs> it's in the Bible. God don't like it when we complain. Talk to him, but he don't want us complaining. And the preacher said, I've been asking for this stuff, and I haven't got it, and the Bible says if I do, I should get it. And uh, God said to him, you know how many deaths there are in the world? It's a million. You ask for something I can't answer. You know how many bicycles there are in the world? It's a million. And the preacher says, you mean you want me to be specific when you pray? That's exactly what I want. He said, my people ask for stuff that I can't answer. So he said, I want a mahogany desk, a swing bicycle, and a rolling chair. Needless to say, in less than three months, he had all of that. The girl prayed for her husband. Ten years. No husband. They asked the preacher to pray. The preacher said, how have you been praying? Ten years, no husband. What, what have you been asking God? And she says, well, God knows. He said, that's your problem. You know how many men there are in the world? Get some paper. He said, write down these things. What kind of man you want, tall, short? She made a list of 10 things. Need I say, six months she was married. He said, after she made the list, he said, can you see this man in your imagination? She said, I can. He said, let's order him from God. She got married, exactly what was on the list. Change your thinking. And God will acknowledge your sincere request. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for your word. And I pray that you would open our hearts with understanding and help us to change in accordance with your will. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Let the church say amen. amen.